You guys ready? Let's go! Ha! Oh! Hello, Duelists! Ross Mero here, and today we are going to be opening a box of Link Brains Pack 3! So, for those of you guys who are unfamiliar, the Link Brains Pack is a yearly pack in the OCG, which basically prints a new Link Monster support for past archetypes throughout the history of Yu-Gi-Oh that basically haven't received Link monsters. Although, lately they have been providing new Link support for archetypes that already have Link support as well. And it looks like, I was not expecting, expecting this, but looks like we are getting reprints of the ABC, uh, was it a dragon? The ABC, well basically like Kaiba's XYZ monsters, the upgrade to that, the ABCs that came out in the special like Kaiba structure deck a while back. Elemental Hero Wild Cyclone, but yes, each pack is only gonna have about four cards, and I think each one is guaranteed to have one foil and very nice. Right off the bat, we have a new Link Monster for one of my most favorite archetypes in the history of Yu Gi Oh! and it's gonna be Artifacts. And this guy over here is a double rare Artifact Dagza. So this card provides really nice support for basically the whole playstyle of the Artifact deck when other cards activate their effects on the field. Uh, Dagza allows you to set artifacts directly from your deck or from your hand and then they will be set to self-destruct during your next opponent's end phase. And when Dagza itself basically gets destroyed during the opponent's end phase, uh, during the opponent's turn I mean, that allows you to special summon or basically recycle artifacts from your graveyard as well. So overall very cool effects that I can really see tying into and enhancing the playstyle of artifacts. If you've realized, I'm not really going to explain in full detail all of the different cards effects here. I'm just gonna briefly give you guys the gist of them. Next, we have a new Link Monster for Tenny, Tenny Dragon, Sahaslala. Okay, so Sahaslala is pretty interesting for Tenny, so even though I'm not that well versed in like the Tenny playstyle, I do know that the deck generally supports normal monsters. But Sahaslala basically supports both normal and effect monsters. Essentially, if you've got a normal monster on your field, it prevents your opponent from targeting effect monsters with attacks or effects. So basically by having a normal monster on your field, that's basically going to protect your Saha Slala, which I believe is going to be your boss in some sense, as well as the other effect monster Tenny bosses that you have. And with its second effect, it allows you to basically produce tokens, which are going to act as normal monsters essentially, and these tokens essentially copy the attack of a targeted effect monster on the field. So you can basically steal high attack power from your opponent's monsters, or if your Sahaslala is the strongest monster on your field, you can basically just create duplicates of that powerful 3k attack. So pretty cool. Up next, we have a Link Monster from Mayakashi. So this was revealed in the live stream, I think last week. Another one of the archetypes that I was really not expecting to see receive Link support. This is the Absolute Zero Mayakashi Yuki Onna. So Yuki Ona over here has quite a few interesting effects. It negates the activation of your opponent's monster effects if those effects were activated when that monster is banished. So first of all, very clearly, this stops all effects that trigger from the out of play area, from the banished zone you could say. But what I'm thinking is, all of those monsters whose effects trigger at the cost of banishing them from their grave. Technically, the cost of these effects is banishing them. So the effect only activates after you pay the cost. And in that state, they are technically already banished when that effect activates. So for those of you guys who are competitive players, if you guys know like the full breakdown of the mechanics of this negation effect, do let me know in the comment section down below. Because what I'm thinking is like based on that earlier logic, technically it should also negate all effects that involve banishing this monster from your grave to create that effect basically which I think would be really powerful because if, if it was an effect that only negates effects that trigger from the banished zone originally I don't think that would be that great and its second effect is basically very nice I find generic uh, zombie deck support basically whenever you special summon a monster from the grave or a monster effect activates from your grave you basically get to activate this freezing effect that turns one of your opponent's monsters to ice giving it zero attack and negating its effect Whoa! This is a reprint right here of one of those... Uh, wait a minute. No, no, no. This, this is not it. This is not it. Sorry, mistake, mistake. I mistook this for another awesome card, I remember. This is from the new bust, uh, Synchro from the new bl Buster Blade archetype. But it looks like we're going to get our first Ultra Rare, and it is... Oh, wait a minute. I do 
believe this is Endymion support. Yes, this is Endymion support. So this is the Sacred Empress of Magic, Selene, and she's pretty damn intense. Like, the moment she's Link Summoned, she, she gains uh, spell counters for the total number of spells on both players' fields and graveyards, which, if you're playing a Magic Counter Endymion deck, is probably going to amount to quite a lot. As long as you've got an Endymion monster on your field, she can't be targeted for attacks. And once per turn, you can pay 3 spell counters from anywhere on your field to basically special summon any spell caster to one of her to one of her linked zones, uh, basically a pawn, uh, to a zone that she points to essentially, but it will be in defense position, which is gonna be very nice! This is- oh wow! Wait a minute, Dracosac! Oh my god, this brings like so much memories, because the Zael era was definitely the era where I was most into Vanguard. I mean, most into Yu-Gi-Oh, I mean, sorry. You can tell my mind is kind of thinking a lot about Vanguard right now, but yeah, anyway. Mecha Phantom Beast back then, that whole token thing, that was pretty sick. And anyway, very nice, we managed to get the Link, one of the ones I really wanted to get to, for Ancient Gear, or in OCG, anti Gear. Antique Gear Ballistic Shooter. So this guy is really, really good if you really just want to rush out your Antique Gear Golem and smash your opponent for an instant 3k damage. When it's Link Summon, you can basically search your deck for any Ancient Gear or Antique Gear Monster or Gear Town. And with his second effect, it allows you to destroy a spell or trap on your field. And in exchange, you get to target a monster on the opponent's field and render its attack and defense zero. So of course, if you choose to pop your Gear Town, I hope I remember Gear Town is the correct spell. I think it is, and basically once Gear Town is smashed, that allows you to send out flying for free your anti-gear golem, which will instantly cause that instant 3k pierce to that opponent uh to that opponent's monster with currently 3k uh which which currently only has zero attack and zero defense for that piercing. And anyway, here we have Brandish Maiden support, Brandish Maiden Jeek, or I believe in the TCG, you guys call this archetype the Sky Strikers. Okay, honestly, Sky Strikers is an archetype that I've never been interested in at all, and I'm totally, I totally have no idea how they play, honestly. So I'm not sure how good this card is, but basically, if Link Summon, you can banish a face-up monster on the field until the end of your opponent's next turn. And once per turn, you can send another card on your field to the grave in order to make Jeek gain 1000 attack permanently. So the instant it comes out, if you use its effect straight away, you basically have a 2.5k for a Link 2, which is already pretty sick. I'm assuming Sky Striker basically has cards that benefit from being sent to the grave, or basically just having a lot of spare. I think they revolve around equips, like having spare cards that you can basically just send to the grave, which are basically don't really give you a loss or allow you to recycle them or give you benefits for sending them to the grave, and that will keep on pumping Jeek even higher. And next, we have... So I'd say she's pretty okay support for World Legacy. You can only link summon her if you have a World Legacy card in your grave, and once per turn during your main phase, you can basically set a World Legacy spell or trap directly from your deck. So that's a pretty nice uh, utility right there for the support, because I know that many of the World Legacy spells and traps are really, really powerful, and they really form the engine of the deck alongside the monster. So it's really nice to be able to get the one that you need at the right time. And uh, if you use her, if you Link Summon her and then use her, use her as Link Material, you can return a card on the field to its owner's deck. So next, we have, uh, this is, this is the Herald Archetype, right? Also known in OCG as Declarer. So this is the Herald of Mirages, or known by its Japanese name, the Mirage Declarer. This monster allows you to negate the activation of spells or traps by sending fairy-type monsters from your hand to the grave. So first of all, that's pretty interesting, sort of like a counter activation, like, in a sense, just like a counter trap in that sense. And also when it's sent to the grave by your opponent, it allows you to retrieve Gishki monsters and or Gishki spells from the grave for a total of two with different names. So that will instantly allow you to prepare, oh very nice, this old card, the, basically the library for Endymion, basically allows you to instantly prepare a ritual summon. So next, oh and here we have the normal version of Yuki Ona as well as a reprint, very nice. So this is a link one for Abyss Actor, Abyss Actor Hyper Director, and I think he has a really interesting and cool effect that kind of, it's so cool because it's like a link monster that supports Pendulum. Basically, it allows you to special summon an Abyss Actor monster that is currently being set in your Pendulum zone, but then you get to replace it with a monster, with a Pendulum monster from your deck, 
or face up from your extra deck, which is super cool. I find that's just so interesting support for uh, any kind of pendulum deck, I would say, but especially so for Abyss Actor. And of course, after you do that, you're only allowed to summon Abyss, uh, Abyss Actor monsters until the end of the turn, but I mean, that's probably fine with you anyway if you're going to be playing Hyper Director in an Abyss Actor deck. So that's some Repsilian right there, more brand. Oh, uh, uh, we got. Oh, very nice. Uh, old Orion, right? This old, one of the old. I tried to collect all the Mecha Phantom Beasts back in the day, man. Artifact Dagza, we already have one of that, so let me just put him over. Uh, well, but it is to be expected. We have 15 packs here, and. I can't remember exactly how many different link monsters there are, but because most of them are supers and there are only a few ultras, you probably won't get all the ultras, and you tend to get at least a few reprints, uh, a few repeats, I mean, just like this one, another Drago sack for the super rares. I think we're only left with, oh, we're left with four packs, okay. Well, we're definitely done with, we're definitely not done with our ultra rares, that's for sure, and I think I haven't even talked about it yet, the card that needs to be talked about most in this set, Link God Dragon, and I am definitely hoping to pull it. And oh my, wait a minute, is this, wait a minute, this is the exact order that I pulled them at the start, right? That's why they follow this same arrangement. Dagza, the artifact, and the TNE dragon, and then uh, Yuki Ona for Mayakashi as well. So if this is a super rare, can I expect Ancient Gear Ballistic Shooter again? Well, we shall see, but I'm really hoping it's just gonna be an ultra rare instead. Let's see where we go with this. Oh my, oh right. I definitely love pulling like the Bujin, the Bujin Link as well. Okay, this is definitely an ultra rare at least. You guys ready? Let's go! Ha! Oh, Union Carrier! This guy's the support for XYZ, ABC, any deck that uses Union Monsters that like combine, combine together, equip to each other. Okay, this is a really nice pull as well, and I love the design of this guy. Essentially, it allows you to target any face-up monster on your field, then from your hand or deck, you can search for a monster which has either the same attribute or same type as that monster and equip it to it, as an equip card that gives it 1000 additional attack. So not only is this good for basically assembling your fusion materials for like the XYZ, ABC, those kind of union combining to become even bigger monsters from the fusion as a fusion summon kind of deck, it also allows you to support decks like the recently released uh, the gear, the Phoenix Gear Feed basically equip decks, essentially allowing you to gain more equips for the cards that you have on your field, which is very cool. All right, so with that, we are down to only one final pack. So far, we've got two ultras and one, two, three, one, two, three, four, six, eight, ten, twelve for a total of fourteen foils. So twelve supers and two ultras. I'm thinking this last one's gonna- oh my god, have they really saved the best for last? I'm calling it now. We are gonna pull the Link God Dragon. Now let's go. First, Bujinki Habakiri. Elemental Hero Inferno Wing. No, it's just a super? Oh, I was expecting a bit more foils, man. Like, only two ultras, but I mean... The Link Brains pack only comes out once a year, so I don't really keep track of the ratios that well. Artifact, Longinus, and we are ending off with another copy of the World Key Master, Reeve. And that'll be all for this Link Brains pack 3 opening. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. Let me know what you guys think about these new cards and link support in the comment section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG booster box and product openings on the day of release. Our next release is going to be next month, December 7th, featuring the return, the long-awaited return of the Shadal archetype, Structure Deck 37, Rebirth of Shadal on December 7th. So make sure you guys subscribe if you don't want to miss it. And with that, hope to see you guys in the next. Yu-Gi-Oh! video. Shh. Our chance encounter from cover deep into my life. I will shelter you, protect you with this bomb.